The following is a production of Learfield Sports. Hello and welcome to another exciting season of the Black Bear Insider. I'm your host, Brian Sullivan. We've got a great show on tap for you as we come out of the gate strong. We've got Maine football head coach, Jack Cosgrove. Our student athlete of the week is Holly Stewart from the Maine field hockey team. We'll take a visit to the College Hall of Fame inductions for the basketball class of 2014 at the Cross Insurance Center. We'll also hear from Maine football Hall of Famer as well as College Football Hall of Famer John Heward, who will also go into the class of 2014, the first ever Maine Black Bear to be inducted. We're also going to talk about Maine move-in day for the many freshmen coming to campus for the first time and a look at the U.S. Cellular upcoming schedule. This is the Black Bear Insider. Hey, man, I'm stranded. You think you can come pick me up? Uh, where you at? Uh, Route 13, 50 miles out. I'm kind of busy right now. It's going to be a little bit. Awesome. Why was U.S. Cellular built to work way out here? Because being stuck in the middle of nowhere should be up to your buddy, not your spotty wireless provider. With 4G LTE coverage, for nearly 90% of our customers, you get national coverage that works harder locally. U.S. Cellular. Hello better. No matter what your game is, indoors or out, the Student Recreation and Fitness Center at the University of Maine is your place to play, work out, relax, and have fun. The Rec Center has state-of-the-art cardio and weight training equipment, a pool, spa, and sauna, a running track, and more than 60 fitness classes a week. Or take your game outside with the Maine Bound Adventure Center. Hit the climbing or bouldering wall. Learn how to kayak or go rock climbing. Whatever game you like, the Student Recreation and Fitness Center is your place to play. Under the bright lights of your playing field, one performer continues to shine. The Fisher Extreme V. With durable X-bracing, the Extreme V carries the load. With precision passes, the power to bust through, the maximum protection of the Fisher trip edge, and the brightest lights available. Fisher, your business, our passion. Learn more at vplowfacts.com. Welcome back to the Black Bear Insider, now joined by Maine football head coach Jack Cosgrove defending your CAA championship in 2013, looking good in 2014. Cos, how are you feeling? Good. Well, good. 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 All right. Here, it, well, good has it been be a here. nice off season being the reigning CAA champ? It's been a long off season. I okay. think the, the season did not end the way we had uh, hoped it would. Uh, certainly, you know, at one point we were 10 and 1 and ended up 10 and 3, so that speaks volumes. Uh, in fact, I said to many people that, uh, you know, we won three of our last four in 12, and I probably felt better in that offseason than I did in this past offseason, simply because of the disappointment of the way the season ended. But, you know, you, you move on. Uh, we lost 18 great seniors, um, which is a difficult challenge being presented to us with, with regard to um, the new 2014 Black Bear football team, but that's a challenge that takes place each and every year in college athletics, college football especially, uh, because of the volume of guys you lose. And you just have to, to, to build a team, a new set of seniors step up, uh, a new group of leaders on the team, and a new key positional players. We're going to uh, start a new quarterback this year. Our version of Tom Brady has graduated, so we're going to have to find a new guy. And you know, all those things said, it's 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 the most probably the most exciting part uh, and challenging part of college athletics is to to rebuild your team with a new senior group and a new group of first year guys growing up and becoming parts of that uh, that team. And it, um, it, it happens every year in every sport, and it's it's a ton of fun. And I think that process is one of the things that uh, main football does well. It's the off season. It's the work that gets put in when uh, it's not August to late December when the team's you know, in the weight room and things like that. And how's that process gone, in your opinion, in this off season? Well, I think we have a reputation as being a, a, a very developmental program that we take young players, we, we try to redshirt them and grow them so that the 18-year-old isn't playing 
until he's 22 years old in that fifth year. And that really has worked for us tremendously. Uh, 17 of our 18 seniors last year were fifth year seniors. And that's a, that's a big number. Um, and you know, it's, it's nice to be able to watch them develop. Uh, the development takes place, you know, during the season somewhat as they're in their freshman year, but most commonly and, and probably obviously when the January comes around, we get in the weight room, we go through our winter program, we go through our spring program, and, and then our summer program, you really see great strides take place then. Now, this is a unique season, but uh, in week one, Norfolk State come away with a victory 10 to six, a win is a win. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, uh, I told our guys, I mean, uh, our theme for last week was uh, prepare to win. Um, you know, that's something that is probably a theme for us almost every year, that first game in terms of making young people or helping young people understand the preparation process that goes into winning and what you have to do all week long, you know, and it's not just about your practices, it's about your meetings, it's about your meals, it's about your rest, it's about your nutrition, your diet, all those kind of things. So, you know, that was the theme of the week. It, 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 the theme wasn't prepare to win by 40 or prepare to win by 10, it was just prepare to win. And we won and that was our goal and, and uh, we're pleased with it. I know that uh, um, it wasn't uh, as well played a game as we'd want it to be, but, you know, what college football coach has ever said that, that we played as a great game? There's so much that you can, there's so much to this game, that there's so much that you can dissect from this game that you need to improve upon. And, and, and our hands are up in terms of we, we know that. And uh, we're going to do that during this, the course of this bye week. We're going to get better as a main Black Bear football team. Now, you mentioned the bye week, and I've heard you say uh, many times before that the biggest improvements come from a team from week one to week two. Well, you've got week two off, and now you go to week three. So what can we expect to see, and what improvements do you want to make going on to the next game, which will be against Well, Brian? I think the benefit of the bye week, and, and, and who knows about bye weeks, you know, how are they going to help you, hurt you, or what? And, and this one's very unique, Brian, in the sense that it's, it's right away. We've never had one this early in the season. You know, usually after four or five weeks, we're accustomed to having a bye week, which fits perfectly because you got four or five games, you got three weeks of preseason. Yeah. It almost sits itself in there halfway, sure. and that's, that's a nice break to have. Um, this is unique and different, and yet it affords us the, the luxury, the op, uh, ability to, to kind of go back to making Maine better here this mm-hmm. week. You know, our, our next opponent, Brian, is not coming up till next week. So we're going to get ahead on our preparation for them, but as we go through the days here, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're going to make Maine football better. We're going to practice Maine, Maine, and make uh, growth and development type of things happen within our team so that we feel good when we get into the, the game planning, the actual practices that involve Bryant, and we feel like we're a better football team. No, I think anyone who saw the game would say that the defense played extremely well. The offense showed flashes at time, but certainly uh, areas to improve. Uh, what do you think needs to happen before you take the field against Bryant? Well, I, you know, if, if we start with our defense, I mean, I think they just got to continue to grow and get better and never get too full of themselves, you know. Ne- things are never as good as you think they are, nor is they as bad, you know. I think that, that fits football to a T, you know. You watch the tape and think our defense was lights out, but, uh, you know, there were some mistakes. There were some things that we uh, were fortunate that didn't come and hurt us. Um, and then on offense, you know, uh, same thing. I mean, we could have done a lot of things better, and we're very close, but... Um, you know, the mistakes that we made have to be corrected and uh, we have to develop uh, uh, a higher level, I think, of confidence on that. We, if there was a measurable, it was the level of confidence our defense played with on Saturday night versus the level of mm-hmm. confidence our offense didn't play with Saturday night. I mean, it, w- it was marked. I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Now moving on, looking forward, I know you don't want to look too far down. How does this team, you know, after one week, how do you feel about the, you know, the aspects moving forward in 2014? Well, everything about the attitude I, I, I really like. I really, I'm impressed with uh, how we've gone about our business uh, throughout the course of the preseason. This is a high effort group uh, who, who come out here every day with a great attitude. Uh, they've demonstrated an ability to, to be very disciplined. Uh, there's a, they, put, they put a ton of pride into the, the presentation that we're making as a football team. That's important to them, you know, and, and I think those are great characteristics and values that we have. Um, where we go depends upon the work we get done out here and in the meeting rooms. and. And we're making strides. We really are. I, I felt like yesterday I, I would hear that we practiced very well. There was a sense of purpose to what we did here Tuesday and um, uh, uh, a real live, legit 
attempt for us to get better as a football team across the board. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Coach. Good luck against Bryant in a couple of weeks, and I'm sure we'll hear from you again as the Black Bear Insider continues. We will, Brian. Right. Thank you very much. We'll be right back. We could move some investments, but your real problem is your checking account. It's awful. You get nothing in return, and you pay monthly fees. Doesn't everybody? Not if we move you into the red. I thought red meant negative. Not that kind of red. Red Wallet Checking from Maine Savings. Red Wallet is free checking with monthly rewards and ATM fee refunds. Red Wallet offers rewards of high interest, cash back, or even tunes. Open your free Red Wallet account today, only at Maine Savings. EBS Building Supplies knows time is the most valuable resource you have. That's why they offer free delivery anywhere in their service area. Fast, convenient, and free, that's the EBS way. So whether you're a professional contractor or a do-it-yourself homeowner, no delivery is too small or too big, and custom ordering is always available. Use EBS free delivery to make your life easier and your home improvement project complete faster. EBS Building Supplies, can do, just ask. Welcome back to the Black Bear Insider. I'm joined now by Holly Stewart, a senior on the main field hockey team. Holly, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for being here. Now, before we get into this year, let's talk a little bit about last year. You were second in the team in scoring, and you had a, you had a nice campaign in 2013. And talk to me a little bit about that. Um, well, last season was a pretty good season overall. I thought our team uh, was really starting to click. Didn't get the results we wanted to at the end of the year, but um, I think this year we're looking to come out and just dominate. So there we go. Certainly a younger team last year that took a while exactly. to, to kind of learn a little bit more about one another. Yep, and now we only have uh, one new or two new players, one transfer and one freshman coming in, and they're already clicking well with the rest of us. And yeah, the rest of us are really comfortable playing together, so it's going to be exciting. One of the things that really means a lot to you would be your academics. You received a prestigious award. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, um, I remember in freshman year, Kelly Newton on our team got the the Dean Smith Award, and it was, she's a player I always really looked up to, and a student I always looked up to. So, um, getting that award was uh, it was a huge honor, and um, there was lots of other really good uh, student athletes nominated. So, um, I was I was very happy to get that. Yeah, I'm sure you were. <laughs> and uh, then this off season, this past summer, you went and played for your for Canada in uh, the competition games. Talk to me a little about that. Yeah, it's the Commonwealth Games. Um, it's a pretty high level field hockey competition. It's actually a multi-sport competition. So there's all kinds of sports, team sports, individual sports. Um, everyone's together in an athlete village. And then, so we basically have a tournament for two weeks. The top 10 teams in the Commonwealth um, for field hockey get to come and compete. We were, we were ranked eighth out of 10 um, and ended up coming eighth out of 10, but <laughs> It's still a good experience, and we're playing against some of the top, top teams in the world. So, What was it like to be there in that village for, uh, for two weeks straight? It was crazy. Like, um, you're walking down the, the main street or going to the dining hall, and then Usain Bolt walks by you. Or, um, it's a lot of faces that I recognized from TV from the Olympics were, were there. So it was, it's kind of a... It was, um, it's kind of like the, it's like a little mini Olympics. Sure. So you kind of get used to that, that feel and that, that uh, vibe. <laughs> and the competition level must have been immense. Yeah, we were playing against uh, top teams. Like Australia was there, um, number two in the world. New Zealand was there. Um, England was there, also top five teams in the world. South Africa, India, like really, really good teams. So yeah, it's pretty neat. And now we're back here in Orono and it's time to get to work. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> no time off, but I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Talk to me a little bit about your outlook for the season. How have things been going? Oh, so good. Um, our coach is super happy with preseason. I think all the girls are as well. Uh, we have a lot of energy. Um, people have been tra uh, doing their training over the summer too, so we can just we just kind of went right into the swing of things uh, with this preseason. We touched on it a little bit before. You were very young last year. Now everyone's got another year under their belt. Do you think that translates to the field? Yeah, I think uh, this is our year. Uh, this is our um, our time to get it done. It's my last chance, so it'd be nice to win the America East. Now, what can people who come out to the games expect to see uh, with you and your teammates? Uh, you can expect to see some really uh, solid defense and um, hopefully some exciting scoring up front. <laughs> there you go. And you had just mentioned it. Your goal is what? To win the America East and go to NCAAs. All right, good. And how does that get done? <laughs> I think just looking one game at a time, 
Uh, each, each day, each practice, each game matters, and just putting your effort out there 100% of the time. So. Okay, thank you very much, Holly. Thank you. Just recently, the Maine Basketball Hall of Fame enshrined its first class in its brand new home at the Cross Insurance Center, a fantastic occasion for all those involved. Take a look. And I would offer this toast to the great game of basketball, basketball in Maine per se, the Hall of Fame that's just initiated its first class, and to the first class, most importantly, the first class that stands behind me. Thank you very much. Cheers. But what a wonderful event. You know, just really proud to be here. Uh, there are so many people that helped me in my career uh, being inducted. You know, I see Bob Brown and Dick Whitmore and just so many people. So it's really, it's really fun to be back. Uh, it's an honor and um, just a special time. It's my great honor to present him with the ring. Well, when you've uh, <clears throat> spent most of your life with the game of basketball, <clears throat> this is the ultimate. And when you spend <clears throat> you spent most of that time in Maine, uh, which we had opportunities to uh, to move both as a player and and a coach, uh, but chose to stay here, and uh, here we are, and things have worked out. Uh, just right. Uh, being in this company today uh, with this ceremony is uh, it's real special. And for doing something so good that people can't forget it. So I'll give you this for everyone. Well, you know, there are so many deserving folks out there you know the the history of Maine basketball is rich and long um, and to, to be recognized in this first class with this this group of people really is truly a thrill for me you know I, I grew up watching a lot of these players play being coached by some of the coaches you know and they were really the people that kind of inspired me um, and really wanted me to kind of pursue basketball and, and to, to strive to be better at it so uh, it, it's truly an honor to be included with them. As the pride of Brunswick, as the pride of Maine, it is my honor to give her this ring as an inductee into the Maine Basketball Hall of Fame. <laughs> It, it is legend, and it goes so far back, and that's what's so neat about this Hall of Fame, you know, that coming about an inaugural class, that whole concept is well overdue. Um, Mainers know their basketball, you know, they, they know what the game's supposed to look like and feel like, and uh, they're a real treat to have as fans because they appreciate hard work, and they appreciate, you know, what the team is trying to do on the floor, and um, I've always been proud of that. I've always loved the fact that Maine was so basketball driven. Uh, it has really shaped who I am today, you know, there are a lot of uh, lessons that you learn on the basketball court that kind of translate into life lessons um, and there was no better teacher than basketball for me. Being at the Division I school and uh, uh, recruiting basketball players from the top down, I think uh, uh, it was uh, it's special to be here with these people because I think uh, it's some, in some regard I touched them all. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the class of 2014 the Maine Basketball Hall of Fame.
College football has a brand new Hall of Fame. It's located in Atlanta, Georgia, and this December, former Maine Black Bear and NFL player John Heward will go into that class of 2014, the first ever Black Bear to gain this honor. And to see John uh, going into that group, to be uh, a part of uh, the elite uh, through their career accomplishments as well as the collegiate accomplishments um, is, is the greatest honor I think you could bestow on uh, a, a collegiate player. You have heard the expression, he or she matches to the beat of a different drum. Well, that expression fits John Hewitt to a T. It's that different drum beat that makes John the tough, fierce competitor that he was and always will be. John graduated from the University of Maine in 1967 establishing a reputation of being one of the finest middle linebackers, if not the finest middle linebacker, the University of Maine ever had. It's a great day uh, for Maine football, primarily, and, and for the uh, teammates that I played with. I think this honor really is a reflection on what we were able to accomplish as a team uh, in those eras and when we played, and uh, that's about it. We think it's fabulous. Uh, it, like everybody else says, it's just it's, it's a fitting tribute to what he's meant to the university. We all just met as freshmen. John and I actually roomed for four years in all the away games, so we could tell right away as freshman players how terrific he was. Just unbelievable in the huddle. In those days, we didn't send the plays in from the sideline, and he was a defensive captain and the quarterback on defense, been the middle linebacker. A lot of our players said they played more out of fear for John Hewitt in the huddle than they did the opponent because he ran a tight huddle and a tough huddle. But I'll tell you this, very intense, very talented. I mean, he could just diagnose plays, offensive plays, and always was at the spot where the ball carrier was going to be. And when he got there, he did some damage. My perspective of John is probably a little bit different. It's been a long time uh, relationship that we've had. You know, I played... Uh, on a football team, a championship football team here in 1974. John was the offensive line coach under Walt Abbott. Um, so I got to, to experience him as a coach and uh, I, I tell people uh, I got my real first legit butt ripping from John Heward uh, during the course of that season as, I, uh, as we uh, became a championship team. Uh, I'll always remember that. It's well deserved. I mean he was as tough and as just a perfect linebacker of the team and he ran us, there was no talkman in the huddle and he came in because he called the plays even though he was a junior but that's the middle linebacker so he was, he was perfect player, he was tough. Well, it's a great honor for the state of Maine just not for John Hewitt to have a player, this is the first player ever to go into the Hall of Fame and John certainly is an All-American player at Maine and success he had here, success in the pros has brought a great deal of honor to the University of Maine and to the state of Maine and this is just a frosting on a cake. I, the only thing I never got to do was see him play. And that's what they say, people tell me, is I'm, I, I really missed out on, you know? Um, you know, described by many, and, and, and that's why we honored him as our first Ring of Honor inductee, as, as the greatest player in the history of the program, and uh, you know, the, the first guy that, that really made an impact in the NFL and uh, led a team to a, it, one of its great moments, the Tangerine Bowl. All the things that he did as a player is probably the only thing I never got to, to be a part of. We're all very proud of you, John. You're one hell of a guy. It's a new year here in Orono as first year students move into their dorms across campus. We talked to a few members of the Maine athletic coaching staff as well as a few players who lended a helping hand as the students said goodbye to mom and dad for that final time. Maine Hello is an important day for our university, all of our new students coming in and it's important for athletics to be a part of that and so we encourage our coaches and student athletes, administrators, staff to come out here and just help be a part of the campus community and be here this morning to say hello, welcome our new students to campus and carry a few boxes. So it's a great thing. Uh, we're happy to be a part of it. Well I think it's just uh, it's good to be a part of the campus community. and. Uh, I like to feel like we're, we're outside the walls of Memorial Gym or the Cross Center, you know, getting to know some of the families, some of the kids are going to be here at UMaine. Uh, we're just kind of a family, like we're here to help, like you're not alone ever, uh, especially just right from the start, they're here uh, helping you out and uh, yeah, it just says that we're one big family. 
How you doing? I'm Bob. Elsa, Elsa. I already gave you responsibility. Cassidy? You did. I Bob. did. Bob. I'm the new basketball coach. It's just great to connect with the students. You know, I mean, everybody needs help moving in. So some of our players are out here. Our coaching staff is out here. And uh, we want to connect to the students and help them get settled and be comfortable when they first get here. What do you remember about when you moved in, the help you got? Did Was this going on when you, when you went through? Um, unfortunately, I came up a couple of days early and I didn't get this help, but I wish I would have because there's a couple of heavy items for me to lift. But uh, yeah, so um, it's great that uh, other, other students can be here helping people move in. The students just came like a, you know, an army and helped everybody out and it was really nice to see all the clubs and organizations get involved and everything. It, and I learned about different things on campus, you know, the different clubs and everything, so it was really nice. Student athletes are students first and uh, we want them to be fully integrated into our campus and uh, make sure that they understand that and this is a great teaching uh, day for them uh, but it's also just a tangible way to show that we are uh, students first here in the athletic department and that we want to be a part of that student body. It's the start of a new year here in Orono with many big games lying ahead as the fall begins to move along. With that in mind, we'll take a look at the U.S. Cellular upcoming schedule. Hey, man, I'm stranded. You think you can come pick me up? Uh, where you at? Uh, Route 13, 50 miles out. I'm kind of busy right now. It's going to be a little bit. Awesome. Why was U.S. Cellular built to work way out here? Because being stuck in the middle of nowhere should be up to your buddy, not your spotty wireless provider. With 4G LTE coverage, for nearly 90% of our customers, you get national coverage that works harder locally. U.S. Cellular, hello better. Well, that wraps it up for this episode of Black Bear Insider. Thank you very much for joining us. If you want more information on your favorite Black Bear teams or athletes before our next episode, visit GoBlackBears.com. Until next time, we will say, Go Black Bears.